Roguelikes are simple. You try to beat the game, fail, and you're left with nothing but your thoughts. Burn them all, LG. Uh, I mean, in Pokemon Emerald Rogue, you pick a starter, choose from multiple branching paths, catch random Pokemon along the way, and inevitably lose to one of eight incredibly unfair, brutal, and sadomasochistic war crimes called gym leaders, only to be sent back to the start and told to do it all over again. But before all of that, a far more difficult battle awaits, choosing our starter. Okay, so it's not that difficult. And neither is their nickname, Latte, because today every Pokemon is named after you guys. So subscribe. With our starter in hand, it's time to leave the hub town for our first adventure, where we're instantly met with our first choice of four different routes. And despite the game very clearly telling me what each of these means, I choose randomly. Because like all good Pokemon fans, I can't read. Luckily, our first Pokemon is a Barboich named Toasties, followed quickly by a Scyther named Panda. We battle our way through this route, the next, and the rest stop as our small team reaches the enforced level cap of 15. Because God forbid this breach in the Geneva Convention of a game would make anything easy on me. Before we know it, we're at our first gym. We stop quickly to get yelled at by a sassy nurse Joy. Wow, what a asshole! And quickly take our frustration out on Flannery, who Latte happily sweeps. One badge down! Okay, I don't know what everyone's talking about. Roguelike? <laughs> More like easy baby game. Our next route is laid out before us and I can't help but follow this dapper stranger down his dark alley. What could go wrong, right? the hell is this? Well, hey, welcome to my ever so lovingly set up game show. You get two choices, one might be good, one might be bad. Now on to round one. Left. Oh. Left. Oh. Left. Oh. <laughs> so unfair. Hopefully learning our lesson not to trust a man in a bow tie, we continue randomly choosing routes. Catch a Lavatar named Brett, pass through another rest stop, and before we know it, we're facing our next gym. And this time it's Winona. We make short work of Murkrow and decide to swap in Brett. And now we're gonna rock slide through the rest of her team with ease. <laughs> oh no! Now we're gonna rock slide through her entire team with ease. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Panda easily takes out Tropius and lowers Crobat. Feeling confident, I decide to commit. Can I live one? I reckon I can live one. <laughs> Latte finishes the fight and I walk away knowing I played that very badly, but confident because I think our team can scale to be unstoppable, especially Brett and Panda. What happens to those Pokemon? Oh, they die, die. I thought I'd just revive them after the gym. <laughs> oh no. On our next route, Toasties evolves, we catch a ghastly named Zuzu, a Torkoal named Wally, and continue on to the next gym, where I try to decide who the best Pokemon to open with is. I just wish there was some way we could know who we're taking on next, but alas, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with Zuzu for the opener. That means it's time for Roxanne. We quickly wipe Corsola before Roxanne sends out Aerodactyl, who sets up Tailwind, doubling her team's speed, before swapping out for Relicanth, who is incredibly slow with only 55 base speed. So there's no way we aren't going first. Whoa! Toasties makes short work of the rest of the team, and I'm left wondering if I really learned my lesson from Panda and Brett. Oh my God, Toasties, you're carrying. I can't believe we just got Zuzu, evolved them, and lost them. That's brutal. No time to mourn or learn from our mistakes because... Okay, there's a random statue. I don't know what that is. I want to go for that. So it's a confusing route, as in there are psychic types. Look, guys, he's learning. Or is it a confusing route, as in there are multiple paths and they're not all going to take me to the where I want to go? Never mind, he's an idiot. We catch a Houndoom named Legion, a Matang named Orangutan, and continue to battle our way to the statue. We defeat their guardian and approach the mysterious Pokemon. Ooh, what could it be? It's gonna be Articuno, right? All right, fine, let's not be entertaining and dramatic, LJ. I weaken Articuno, confuse it, and just like my younger brother, it slowly starts hitting itself, which means I can start throwing balls. And after about seven balls and whittling it down to literally one health, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself. <gasps> we have one last dream ball. I'm asleep, I'm dreaming. Does that mean that my dream is real? My dream is alive? I guess not. We confidently march into the next gym to take on Juan and his water team. Luckily, Latte matches his typing, so he can't do anything. What? I am beginning to realize what type of game this is, and switch to Toasties, who is immune to electric moves, and begin earthquaking through his team. That is, until Lapras lands a freeze dry. Oh no! 
We bring in Orangutan to deal with Lapras, Kabutops, and swap back to Lade for his little Mantine. What if I thought the Thunder using Lapras was proof they built these gym leaders to be walking war crimes? You haven't seen this Mantine yet. It quickly uses Toxic, then roosts back to full health, and swaps out for Lantern, who then protects, and Volt switches back to Mantine, who destroys Orangutan, and this begins the next six minutes of Mantine and Lantern, both using Toxic, Protect, and Scald to stall, weaken, and wipe my entire team, while I can do absolutely nothing. This is the worst. And we're sent back to the hub town with absolutely nothing, except our level seven latte. A few bucks, and we're told to do it all again. But we've learned a valuable lesson. I really suck. But with no time to waste, I jump back in and do two more runs. And despite my best efforts, I don't make it further than the fourth gym in either. Mostly because on one, I caved my terrible gambling addiction, lose most of my team catching a Reggie Rock, and on the other, I caved my terrible gambling addiction and lose most of my team trying to catch a Reggie Rock. So you can tell I really learn from my mistakes. We start run four and work our way through three gyms successfully, swapping our team in and out to cover our weaknesses. And by the time we get to our fourth route, we have Latte, an Oman star named Mini, Kabutops named Toasties, a Blissey, a Pupitar named Steph, and an Ariados named Glizzy. But that's when we see it. Another legendary, this time guarded by a strong trainer battle. Someone smart who learns from their mistakes would choose another route, a less dangerous route, a route with less trainers who are specifically designed to end your run. So of course, I enter the battle. We're facing Wally and his team is tough, but we work our way through him slowly and steadily. Glizzy does amazing work and Latte uses Perish Song to easily trap his team. And after beating him within an inch of his life, we steal his Tauros and name it Nips. High on our victory, we enter the legendary den and... Okay. Slowly we whittle down the shiny Raikou while just trying to hold on for 10 turns so our timer balls are more effective, but it's just not working. Ball after ball, he keeps breaking out. Our team is being weakened. We might not make it through the next gym at this rate, or worse, we might lose our run here. So we throw our final Pokeball. Holy shit, I caught a shiny. A legendary beast needs to inherit a legendary name. And so we say goodbye to Glizzy and say hello to Glizzy. We continue to the fourth gym and after five hours of gameplay, I notice a small statue. What do I find? Well, for a small fee, this statue will tell me what gym I am versing. Motherfucker. I learn we're taking on Flannery this time. And with all the confidence in the world, we enter the arena. She opens a nine tails empowered by sunny weather, meaning every solar beam it uses is instant and perfectly counters my water types. Luckily, Nips takes it down, yes but her camera rubbed manages to take out Mini. We trade blows and send out Toasties, who somehow gets one hit by a Typhlosion. We send out Nips and go for the close combat, but Typhlosion hangs on barely. Gonna be fighting, I'm dead. <gasps> Steph one hits Rapidash and we send our very weak Nips out for her final Pokemon. We're going for the close combat. Please, 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 end it all. Oh, shite. Wow, if I hadn't switched, actually, that would have been a fine. I just sacrificed Nips for no reason then. With our fourth gym down, we are the furthest we've ever been. We need to replace our fallen team, so we catch a Lapras named Cappuccino, a Marsh Tomp named Lockies, who instantly evolves, and round out the team catching Legion the Houndoom all over again, all while leveling the team and evolving Steph. I make it to the rest stop and sell everything I own to buy potions, while carefully making sure I have $5,000 dues left for the gym statue, which goes on to tell me it's a... Fighting type. Lockies comes out strong and protects as the Breloom sets up substitute, poisons itself, and then switches out. This is a bold strategy, so let's see how it plays out. We follow it up with a protect and watch as Medicham sails through the air, crashing headfirst into the wall. Lockie easily sweeps the remainder of the team and totally doesn't live on one HP before Glizzy comes out to close the fight. Oh my god, I did it, and I didn't lose anyone. At this point, I'm terrified to take on any tough routes. You see, these are full of trainers meant to chip away at you and slow you down. Plus, I feel confident in our current team, so I choose to take the easy route and begin leveling our team up on a few weak, tiny, piss baby little bugs. A feeling like Legion just wasn't pulling his weight, I swap him for a pincer and make my way to the next gym. I drop $6,000 dues to find out it's a flying gym and put Steph up front, feeling overly confident to take home badge number six. She quickly crushes Zatu and Dragonite comes out next. This is gonna be risky as hell, but I'm going for the Stone Edge. Oh shit. 
I swap in Cappuccino and he roosts to heal up before sending in Butterfree. This weak little bug is nothing to us. It manages to hold on for a few turns, sleeping us, quiver dancing to raise its speed, and even lives on one HP. We take a hurricane and decide to switch to Locky who tanks it, but is too low, so I switch again. But Latte takes the hurricane and is almost taken out. I'm petrified of losing someone, so I just keep swapping. Until eventually, I just have to say, Cappuccino's gonna go out. I'm just switching around and getting hit by hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. I should have sacked him ages ago. Glizzy, you're the only one who I'm who I think might tinily be able to outspeed. We wake Glizzy up and Butterfree decides to substitute and sleep me again, then Quiver Dance again. This continues until finally Glizzy clears it. This stupid little bug gave me far too much trouble, but I'd never let a Butterfree end my run. You'd have to suck for that to happen. Next up is Dragonite. I think I outspeed and it's flying. He's a flying dragon, but discharge, special attacking Raikou. And it's a shiny, so 10 times extra damage. Oh shit. We slowly take Dragonite down and realize we need to switch, but there is a major issue with our team. Everyone is low from all of the switching, and now Winona's Aerodactyl is able to one by one take them all out. But instead, she decides to flex her Salamance on us just to show how far the distance between us and her actually is. I can't believe I didn't win with the shiny legendary. So again, we're sent back to the start, not managing to claim our sixth badge or our father's approval. We're learning though. Our early runs we lost because we weren't playing seriously, and that run we got that far by selling everything we found to buy potions, and lost because we were too attached to our Pokemon. To win here, we need to be ruthless, sacrificing anything and everything to succeed. With everything I've learned, we begin run five, and this time I'm not playing around. We easily make our way back to the sixth gym. Along the way, I catch a Bellsprout named Gobbies, a Gligar named Glizzy, a Pseudo Wudo named Sugon, a Chin Chow named Green, and Orbit the Heracross. I make sure to aim for Nurse Joy on my route now because she not only gives me a free heal, but combines every other rest area too. Wish the game had told me that earlier. Our entire strategy this run revolves around opening with Glizzy and using Toxic to set up strong poison damage, and then you turning out for a tanky Pokemon, essentially stalling out their strategies. And we are destroying every single gym this way, and I'm starting to honestly believe this might be the run. Yes, no deaths. But then the very same trap that has ruined so many runs appeared. I mean, there's a legendary there, but do I care about a legendary? I'm going the tough routes. Look at that character development. We make our way through hordes of trainers, but Glizzy holds strong, carrying our entire team to the next rest stop, where we follow the plan exactly. We sell everything, buy potions, and continue crushing gym leaders flawlessly like the weak little butterfreeze they are. Well, almost flawlessly. We catch a Wishcash named Toasties on a tough route and head straight to our next rest stop. But then I find out the fifth gym is water. That's right, Guan and his Toxic stall team. But this time, Glizzy and I are ready. We open with Toxic, U-turn, go straight into Lantern, Discharge. That's it, that's the play. And then I completely abandon this plan and almost get myself killed. Whoa. Glizzy has carried us almost this entire run. He is my son. I can't lose him. Okay, he's rock water. He's going to go for a rock attack. We're going to switch to Gobby. Tank whatever rock hit this is. The rest of the fight goes smoothly with only a few close calls. Don't wake up, don't wake up, don't wake up, don't wake up, don't wake up. Nice. And honestly, I have never taken a game this seriously before. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. We continue with the plan, edging closer and closer to our victory, selling everything, buying potions, and begin to take down our sixth gym, the Electric Badge. We open with the Unstoppable Glizzy and let him set up Toxic and you turn out for Toxic. Oh shit, Ice Beam on flying, that's bad. No, Glizzy! I can't believe I lost Glizzy. Ice on grass, I thought I'd one hit. I'm throwing, I'm actually throwing. What's gonna tank the ice hit? Latte will tank the Ice Beam. <sighs> okay, we lost Glizzy. But that's fine, we can pull this off. Toasty's handles Jolteon, plus all Monetric, and Electabuzz with ease. I can't even celebrate. I, I, I lost Glizzy. We have to move forward no matter what. Except something new appears in our path. Unsure what it is, I break from my plan and ignore the tough route, heading instead towards the new route. It's a Pokemon lab, enter this encounter. Hey LJ, I managed to catch some of the Pokemon that had fainted. What? <laughs> no, I don't want Sugon. Glizzy! Glizzy's come home! Glizzy! <laughs> With Glizzy returned to us, I can confidently say, this is the run. Let's go! And we head to the seventh badge, Flannery. She's gonna have like a sunny day activated, but that's okay. 
I'm water and I'm ground. Nine tails with solar beam. Toasties takes out camera, but not before being hit by a toxic. I really don't want to lose Toasties to a long stall, so I decide to switch for safety. I think I'm going to try send out green. She'll probably move first. Please live. Please live. It's only two times effective. Please live. Water jam to boost it. Whoa. Ninetales lives through our strongest move, and I will admit, this is where I abandoned whatever was left of my dignity. I begin to spam max potions. Not for one, not for two, not for even three turns. But for 10 turns straight. Look, I just wanted it to use anything except solar beam. And, well... That is so funny. <laughs> it only knew solar beam. Flareon comes out, and despite being two times not effective, one hits green. Toasties lands Muddy Water, luckily, but... Whoa. Desperate, I send out Glizzy and Toxic, but... Holy shit. Latte comes out, rain dances, and begins chipping away, barely taking out Arcanine and Houndoom. Blaziken is up next. This might be the end. Heracross is slaughtered next, and finally Gobby goes down as well losing our run to the seventh gym. I am racking my brain trying to understand our loss. Three questions come to my mind. What went wrong? Why did I lose? And what the fuck is Flannery feeding that thing? After all of that, we return to the hub town, having gained nothing, lost everything. My son, what do we do? 10 hours of gameplay down, let's do another run. That's right one last run just like our last plan we choose tough routes only and collect as many items as we can catch gremlin glizzy demon sweep watson more tough routes catch gooby and then okay we catch lauren and continue training we sweep our second gym and watch as gremlin transforms from a small creepy child to a small creepy child that knows kung fu and then into a bald ball sack on springs before we enter the third gym which we sweep easily Demon saves the day, but I play dangerously and lose him to Matang next. Glizzy comes out and easily sweeps the rest of the team, and we secure the next badge. All right, well, I lost half my team, and I considered throwing on the towel entirely, but we've still got Glizzy, and that's really all that matters. This run is looking rough, but we have a plan. We can catch four Pokemon on the next route, potentially a legendary, and get a full heal before the next gym. We catch an Ivysaur named Herbert, a Pelipper named Bootyman69, a Ninjask named Ninjim, and a second Ivysaur named Orbit. It might not look it, but this team is going the distance. You f***. Okay, this team is going the distance, but first, we're getting a legendary. We put Herbert in first to weaken and sleep it to make it easier to catch. Oh, wait, no. I'm in a giant lava pool. Why, why did I send out Herbert? Despite the poor planning, we do manage to catch our new team member, Hen the Entai. The plan is working so far, and I refuse to give up. We sell everything, buy potions, and head to the next gym, which will be water. Perfect timing. I just got Entai. One lets me set up two growths and then swaps, letting me obliterate his Huntail. Then we keep the momentum rolling with Seeking, Quagsire, Blastoise, and Whale Lord. Holy shit. This is the run. That was pretty easy. That's four gems down. It wasn't even close on that one, to be honest. Wow. Next route, we catch a special Slow King, meant to be stronger than normal encounters, and swap out Booty Man. And then right after, show more character growth than ever before. <laughs> I've learned my lessons. We head straight to the next gym, and we're confronted by our nemesis, Flannery. But we have a plan. We open Toxic and begin using Scald to take down Arcanine. We rinse and repeat on Rapidash before swapping to Crockies. But I forgot he has no water moves. Despite this, we manage to take down Magma, let Glizzy handle Makago, and wrap the fight in the most anticlimactic way possible, a Toxic stall off with her Torkoal. Yes! Okay, Flannery is down. That's five of the trainers this time. I've said it before, I know, but guys, this is the run. Didn't mean to do that. Did not mean to do that. I accidentally take the calm route, meaning we won't see any trainers or items. This could lead to a massive loss if we can't afford potions. But either way, Roxanne is up next. Herbert opens strong before Crockies comes out and begins absolutely destroying her entire team. Okay, I barely done any commentary. This game is like ruined the fact that I play this all for fun and make jokes and play with the random options. I'm trying my hardest right now. This, what has happened to me? We continue on with absolutely nothing stopping us. Trainers, gyms, every route falls before us. We sell everything and invest in dozens of max potions. The only thing we can't buy, our father's love. But thankfully, we're crushing him next. 
Dude, Norman does scare me. Norman scared me when I was a kid. Norman scares me right now. Glizzy starts strong, wearing down his Snorlax, but he goes to send out Tauros. It's going to have like close combat or something, and I'm going to lose my boy here. But I'm an idiot. So why not be an idiot? Should have switched. Reeling from the loss, Booty Man comes out for the toxic stall. Whoa. I thought fighting wasn't very strong against Psychic. No shot he lives one more turn after this. It's just impossible. <sighs> I guess I was playing risky within crit range. Luckily, Toxic can take him down before Herbert comes out to handle Spinder and Apop. Hen takes down his Furret, but takes a lot of damage in the process. His last Pokemon is Ditto. I decide to play it risky and leave Hen out, and let him transform before swapping to Crockies to punish him. And with that, we collect our seventh badge. Oh, thank God. That means all that's left is Winona with her flying types. But I lost two boys there. We only have a few Ultra Balls left and only one route to prepare our team for Winona. What the fuck? But we get incredibly lucky, catching a Charizard named Charlizard. The issue is the only other encounters on this route are all grass types. With no other options, we catch a second Charizard and name him Charizard. And just like that, we're at our final rest stop. We heal up, sell everything, and prepare to destroy the final gym. So it's gonna be flying first. So let's put Entai at the front. Let's do it. <clears throat> let's go. Hen obliterates their ninjask and then crushes their mask of- What? Thank you. Crockies comes out and uses Ice Fang to take out Dragonite and Togetic. With this much momentum, we are absolutely annihilating her team. Desperate, she sends out a weak little baby boy Butterfree. And? I am really confused. You're the eighth gym. You're supposed to be hard. It manages to live on one HP and puts me to sleep, which is no problem. I swap to Charizard. Another Quiver Dance. It's going to be fast. It'll go for the Sleep Powder again. That's very scary. Okay, this Butterfree is suddenly very scary. Oh, fuck. And just like that, Charizard is one hit. Our only hope now is Ninjask, one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. Do I outspeed? Let's find out. The fastest Pokemon in the game can't even outspeed this Quiver Dance. How is it not missed is the question. Oh my God. How is it hitting so many Hurricanes? I'm sorry, but that this is legitimately ridiculous. One by one, our team is slaughtered. And as I watch Hen die, I can't help but feel this is my fault. This weak little bug is nothing to us. Stupid little bug. I'd never let a Butterfree end my run. Crushing gym leaders like the weak little Butterfrees they are. Little baby boy Butterfree. You're supposed to be hard. Finally, it's Herbert's turn. I can't believe it just hit six hurricanes. Oh my god, my Focus Sash. Does Focus Sash trigger twice? I guess not. I cannot believe I just lost four, maybe five hours to a fucking Butterfree. We're sent back to the start, but I've learned my lesson. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. We may be defeated today, but we will return. We will have our revenge. We will uh, subscribe for part two and click here to see me survive 100 days as a gym leader.